This video is partly sponsored by Avira Free Security for Windows. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and what's better than a Dell XPS 15? Well, I think you can probably guess where this is going. How about a Dell XPS 17? This is the brand spanking new one, the 9710, so it's the uh, 2021 refresh, as is this, which you may have seen my review for a couple of days ago. You can see the size difference between them, uh, visually identical, other than the fact that we don't have a white version of the 17 and also, well, it's got a bigger screen. But between the two, this is basically just a bit bigger, a bit more powerful, and also more expensive. So what's new? Well, like the 15 inch, we're also getting the latest Intel 11th gen H45 series of CPUs. We're also getting Nvidia's brand new RTX 3000 series of cards. Uh, we get the option between the 3050 and the 3060, as well as integrated graphics if you wanna go for the entry level model. Faster RAM, now up to 3200 megahertz. Thunderbolt 4 ports, up from Thunderbolt 3. And it's about 100 grams lighter, although you'd be hard pressed to really tell. But it's the exact same aluminium chassis that we're uh, pretty used to on these Dells now, as well as the carbon fiber track pad, which looks quite snazzy. Uh, as I say, unfortunately, there is no Arctic Frost white version of this, only on the 15. And also, bizarrely, uh, there's no OLED screen option on here, again, only on the 15. Uh, so you either go for a full HD plus non touch. 17 inch or a 4k plus touch which as you can see is what i have here and surprisingly that makes quite a difference to the weight it adds about 200 grams uh, so we're topping out at 2.42 kilograms for the 4k down to 2.2 kilograms for the full hd plus so you really are getting a big screen experience on this laptop and as dell's marketing suggests this is kind of like a 17 inch screen in a 15 inch form factor because of those razor thin bezels and just how compact it is overall Ports are nice and simple. There's just four Thunderbolt 4s, along with a 3.5mm headphone jack, a V6 SD card reader, that's a full-size reader. Same lovely chiclet-style keyboard. No numpad on this 17-inch or anything. They just use the extra space for slightly wider speaker grills. This is uh, probably one of the better uh, speakers I've heard on a laptop. We get Windows Hello supported face unlocking in the webcam and also a fingerprint reader built into the power button. And also this gargantuan precision touchpad, which is just lovely to use. Although it's a very small niggle, but I've noticed on this particular XPS 17 I've got, it's a bit kind of like clacky, the left side of the touchpad. It sort of makes a noise when you tap it, whereas on the right side it doesn't. Again, one of those famous Dell quality control issues. Now, before we get to the performance tests, because really that is what this is all about, uh, it's pretty much a spec bump this year with those new graphics cards, new processors, faster RAM. Uh, but the big question is, how much is this gonna cost? And I'm sure you can guess, it's not cheap. So the 17 starts at about $1,550 or 1,850 pounds, but it's about 250 more than the new XPS 15. Now, having just reviewed the 15, we are getting a few extra options here. In the UK store, at least, it doesn't seem to be the case for the US, but we have this i9-11980HK option, which is actually the fastest Tiger Lake CPU you can buy. And it's also the only chip that's unlocked, so you can go into Intel's XTU and modify the clock multiplier and some other stuff. But I'm not convinced this is really worthwhile in a laptop form factor like this. I would probably just stick to the regular i7 or i9 and save a bit of money. But really the biggest upgrade are these new GPU options. And so you can either have Intel's integrated graphics if you just want a 17 inch laptop to do some basic work or watch Netflix. But really you're gonna want either the 3050 or the 3060, which I have in here, and is a 70 watt TGP variant of the card. And so not only are we getting an extra two gigs of VRAM over the 3050 Ti that we get in the 15 inch model, uh, but it's also that higher TGP, 70 versus 45. So this should be, on paper at least, quite a bit more powerful than the 15 inch, and also a good step up from last year's RTX 2060 Max-Q, which was a 65 watt TGP variant. I've also spec'd this with 64 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage, although importantly, you can upgrade these yourself. If we open it up, you'll see that we have the two RAM slots and also two M2 SSDs. So uh, there's quite a lot of room for expandability here. And you can also see we have this big vapor chamber cooler. Okay, just a quick mention of our lovely sponsors, Avira Free Security for Windows. The all-in-one cybersecurity solution for security, privacy, and performance. 
All you have to do is download the Avera Free Security for Windows app, which as it says on the tin is completely free, run their smart scan and it'll show you any issues or threats on your PC. And also suggest how you can improve performance. We also get a handy password manager, driver updater and a file shredder to delete sensitive stuff permanently. Plus you can use their free VPN to help keep you safe online. So if you're after an all-in-one security hub that does everything you need, then definitely give Avira Free Security for Windows a try. Click the link in the description to get started. The thing is though, I don't think the 17 inch is as big of an upgrade uh, this year as the 15 inch is, which I'm using for some notes here, uh, because the difference is with the 15, we went from the GTX 1650 Ti last year to the RTX 3050 Ti, which means we have all those extra RTX features like ray tracing, which is a bit pointless really on these kind of laptops, but importantly DLSS, which makes a big difference to frame rates in games that support it, and also Nvidia Broadcast and Reflex, all those kind of extra things on top of the raw performance increase. However, with the 17, we already had the RTX 2060 Max-Q last year with those RTX features. No doubt this will be faster and we'll test this now, but I don't think it's gonna be quite the same jump as we've seen with the 15. Okay, let's get to the good bit. Let's talk about performance. And in terms of the processor, we're looking at an average of about 20% optic uh, between single core and multi-core. And I haven't made any attempt to overclock this further. And then in terms of graphics, coming from the 2060 to the 3060, we're looking at about a 25% average boost. So how does this translate to real world use? Well, let's start with a few games, because while you could argue this isn't a proper gaming laptop, it's certainly got the specs on paper. And actually coming from last year, we're looking at anything between a three and a 52% performance boost, which is pretty insane considering both cards in both laptops have those RTX features like DLSS. And considering we're getting triple digits in three of the five games on test, and even in Cyberpunk at ultra settings, although without ray tracing, running at full HD+, we're getting over 60 FPS. Ah, you wanna have a good time? For me though, I spend about half my life in Premiere Pro editing videos. So really that was the main reason I bought this. And impressively, the new 9710 knocked off about two and a half minutes or 26% off my 10 minute 4K H.264 export, which is actually double the improvement I saw with the XPS 15 coming from last year's one to the new one. So quite a big improvement there. So across the board, we're looking at about a 25 to 30% boost over last year's XPS 17, uh, which is pretty nice, although not really enough reason to chuck your old one in the bin and buy this. But certainly if you're coming from a two or three year or older laptop, then this is gonna be a big upgrade for you. However, when it comes to cooling, there's good and bad news. On the outside, it gets very toasty. I recorded a peak of 60 degrees Celsius above the keyboard, which is about 10 degrees hotter than the new XPS 15 with the keyboard and touchpad in the palm sweating mid 40s. So hot on the outside, but the vapor chamber does a good job of keeping throttling to a minimum on the inside. A 20 minute time spy stress test showed no appreciable drop in performance with peak GPU temps hitting about 85. And while I wouldn't necessarily recommend that top spec i9, uh, the uh, 11980HK in here, the fact that you can get that, the fastest Intel Tiger Lake CPU, along with a 3060 with a decent 70 watt TGP in here with 64 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage, which you can then further expand yourself. The 17 really can be a proper desktop replacement and a little sort of portable powerhouse. And obviously at two and a half kilograms, you will notice it in your backpack, but it is still uh, sub 20 mil and not you know, a proper thick, ugly, heavy gaming laptop. And also the battery life is decent, which is not something you get for most laptops. Obviously it will vary based on what screen you go for. However, the 17 does have an advantage over the 15 because uh, all models come with the 97 watt hour battery, uh, which is a bit bigger than the 86 watt hour in the 15, although bigger screen. Uh, but that's the same regardless of whether you go for full HD or 4K, because on the 15, if you go for the full HD, then you get the much smaller 56 watt hour battery. And that was one of my criticisms. Why can't I have full HD with the bigger battery? So it you know, lasts forever. So with this, while I don't have the full HD version, I would imagine that with this huge battery will give you probably a good 10 hours of life, depending on how you use it. Uh, although with this 4K plus touch version I have, I'm getting about six hours of use. 
uh, an hour of YouTube uses about 15% of the battery, which is actually a little bit better than last year. The same test used 19%. But I'm sure you'll agree that as impressive as the specs are and what's going on under the hood, the highlight for this really is that big, beautiful 17 inch screen. So I measured a peak brightness of about 520 nits in HDR or about 430 or so in SDRs. So it's plenty bright enough, but perhaps that's an area in the future that could be improved. However, color accuracy, which of course is important for creators and if you're doing any kind of uh, photo or video editing, is insanely good. We've got 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, and 96% DCI-P3. This is one of the most color accurate screens I've ever tested on a consumer laptop. And then there's this webcam, which is just terrible. Considering the price and you know, the quality of everything else, it's definitely one of the biggest issues I have with a laptop. It's, serviceable and obviously they had to squeeze it into the top bezel there but the quality is pretty poor so that is the new xps 17. same on the outside faster on the inside uh, the latest ports still a terrible webcam which is probably my biggest criticism of this uh, especially in this day and age also standby battery life isn't great way too often i come back to this a day or two later and it's completely out of charge plus there's still the odd quality control issue and also I think the same criticisms or comments for my 15 inch video apply here in that I would like to have seen maybe an AMD 5000 series version of this. And also a quad HD screen would have been perfect. I just think full HD is probably not gonna be sharp enough on this 17 inch screen. So you have to go for 4K, which is great, but then obviously that impacts your performance and your battery. So quad HD would have been perfect on this. Between the 15 and the 17, well, really comes down to how you're going to use it and also how deep your pockets are. They are both very expensive laptops, uh, but the 17 does take it to the next level. Um, really, this is proper desktop replacement level performance. The 15's a bit more of a travel companion because of course it's lighter and smaller. For similar money, you could get the new Razer Blade 17, also with 11th gen and up to an RTX 3080. Yes, it's a touch heavier and more gaming oriented, but the extra performance would be ideal for productivity as well. But I think the most interesting competition to this would be the upcoming MacBook Pro 16 refresh. Rumored to come out probably in late September with Apple's new M1X or M2 chip. That is gonna be an interesting uh, battle between the best laptops from Windows and Mac. So uh, stay tuned for that. And yeah, what do you think of it? Would you be tempted to buy one or maybe get the 15 or none of the above? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.